Hey folks, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be making a mono tub and I want to like make sure that I have all the pieces out here so people who have been uh, curious lately understand what it takes to construct the mono tub and uh, you know what I prefer to use in the way of like spawn and uh, bulk substrate. So what you do first and foremost is you got to acquire a tub. And I tend to favor the 54 quart, 56 quart, that range. And uh, basically the first thing I do is I go through and I drill out the holes on the sides. So I use uh, my DeWalt drill over here with a nice hole saw attachment. And I go ahead and take out, oh, you know, two holes on either of the long sides, you know, about four to six inches up. Uh, center it basically so the center of the drill bit goes about six inches up and then it leaves a hole that uh, is for your fresh air exchange and then I cover those holes with micro pore tape and I uh, also put just one singular hole on either of the short ends and also cover that up with micro pore tape you can also use the polyfill stuffing um, everybody has an opinion of what works best micro pore tape has worked best for me I do not like having to pick pieces and bits of substrate out of my mushrooms um, it, it just they get mixed up and it's really in my opinion unsightly and it becomes unclean after so long so okay once you get your uh, holes drilled out on the sides you go about uh, cleaning out all the small bits and pieces of uh, plastic that are dispersed they just kind of get spread all over hell and then you cut yourself a liner and again everybody has an opinion whether or not liners are necessary I find that given the growing conditions that I have here in the Pacific Northwest, um, what, I, what I tend to find is I have a lot of side pins when I don't use a liner. Uh, I've used foil, I've used plastic. Foil works, it's definitely not ideal. Uh, black plastic is accessible, really cheap, and it's one of those things where it's, it seems to adhere to the sides of the uh, colonized substrate a whole lot better to create those, uh, to stop creating rather those micro conditions that encourage the side pinning. So you go ahead and you secure, and this one I did a pretty slop job securing it. I was kind of hasty when I did it last night. Uh, just secure the uh, liner to the inside with, I use duct tape, but any kind of a tape would be sufficient. And then as far as, uh, you know, the next step, what I tend to do is I'll go through with like Lysol or rubbing alcohol and just douche the thing heavy duty and get any amount of baseline contamination under control because I just had to deal with a tub that got the, oh, what's it called, verticulum. And it's just frustrating to do all this work only to have an unwanted fungal or bacterial infection spoil it for you. So, and fortunately it was just a 16 quart, you know, mini mono tub, but all the same, it's work that you put in and you don't want to have to go about, you know, redoing things that you've already done once. So for this size of tub, once you have it uh, configured, cleaned, and ready to go, uh, you'll want to go ahead and make sure that you have six quarts thereabouts. Five or six quarts works just fine of colonized substrate. And what I've been using with great luck lately is, is whole oats. And I'm talking straight for your horse's mouth kind of whole oats. Nothing fancy, nothing crushed, nothing cut. Basically the cheapest, most basic stuff you can find at a feed store that's called oats. Not anything else, like you could use rye, you can use wheat, but good lord, all I've had to do with oats, and I'm, I'm totally sold on oats now, is I take the oats and I soak them in a, a water solution usually about a gallon, two gallons of water with a tablespoon of azomite in it. Azomite is just like a pH buffer. It works like dolomite lime or gypsum, and it tends to add um, micronutrient content into this, uh, uh, the spawn as well. So I find that my jars colonize a whole lot quicker, for one thing, and uh, the fruits that I get are very, very impressive. They're, they're very potent. They have a very significant bluing reaction. So you'll want to have these on hand, and uh, once you've got your substrate, or your, rather your spawn put together, you'll want to go ahead and start uh, producing your substrate, which I've already gone ahead and pre-mixed here. Which, for me, uh, my bulk substrate is a 650 gram brick of coconut coir, which you can get at virtually any pet store, or order off Amazon, or local pet store, you know, or oh, I already said that, but anyhow, you get the idea. 
Uh, I take one of those. I take uh, about uh, four to six cups of vermiculite per 650 gram brick. And then I'll put uh, about two quarts of water and in that water, I'll mix in a tablespoon of azomite. Notice a familiar theme here. Essentially, the azomite seems to buffer the pH to a level that is very favorable for the fungus. And it tends to even, at least in my experience, ward off a great deal of unwanted contamination. Like I haven't had to deal with trike at all in any of the tubs I've grown. The only one that I've had to deal with is that verticulum uh, contamination. And I mean, that for me is going to be, you know, a pretty easy thing to go about uh heading off on this next run because what I've done is when you mix the 600 and uh, when you mix the 650 gram brick of coir with the uh, vermiculite the azomite and then two uh, one two three I'm sorry four quarts of hot water the hot water and I'm talking boiling hot water uh, will cause the coir brick to begin to break down into this familiar texture and uh, what you'll find is it will kill, pasteurize basically, any of the nasties that you don't want to have. So you'll see like this thing is at field capacity. There's water running off onto my fingers. And this is essentially like the ideal consistency as far as your uh, substrate's concerned. So what you're going to do at this point, and I'm probably not going to do it on this particular video, is you can go ahead and start taking a quart or two quarts at a time and uh, putting the quarts of the substrate into the bottom, like put two quarts in the base, coat that with a good amount of the substrate, and do like three layers of, uh, you'll go spawn, substrate, spawn, substrate, until you're out of jars and you have, you know, have the uh, height of it basically within maybe half inch of the side holes, so you're not trying to, you know, push up too, too high against the uh, fresh air exchange holes you have in your tub. And uh, once you have this done, it's truly a set it and forget it situation. You'll just put the lid back on your tub and uh, put your tub in a fairly climate controlled type area. Uh, I tend to find that 75 degrees Fahrenheit is the optimum temperature range for my tubs to uh, attain a certain level of humidity and also uh, you know, keep a little bit of ambient light in the room because that tends to encourage some pinning as well. I don't have like a fancy grow light or any business like that. Some people swear by that and I don't have any experience indicating that that's a worthwhile investment of time or resources. So just ambient light tends to be enough. And then you'll find that just within a, a matter of weeks, I'll show you one of my other tubs that I've got over here. These tubs, and my room's a mess, bear with me. Uh, I've already picked out all the ripe ones out of here, but this tub is about two and a half weeks old and it's putting off fruits like i've already d uh, got a, a whole bunch of fruits off this one to begin with but yeah i mean that's the idea behind the monotub tech and if you have any questions about how to you know best perform doing these activities to get the maximum results for your investment of time and energy leave comments and otherwise just be safe and smart out there peace